Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have Igor Weinstein here, and he is an amazing person. He is in business, and today he'd like to talk about how, he wants to talk about how to create the perfect business for yourself and how to create the perfect life for yourself. So he's going to go into depth about a lot of different topics and a lot of different things to help you improve your overall life and your business. And we're going to just give it away to Igor because Igor, you are just an amazing person. I'm so excited to have you on the show and tell everybody about yourself and what you do. Thanks, Lacey. Thanks for having me. And yeah, perfect is a bit of a, a big word. So we'll see how far we get there. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, look, I, I, I'm i an entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur. Uh, I've been in business. I probably started my first business with about 17, 16 or 17, a, a long time ago. Um, and, you know, recently I sold my company. Uh, I've got other startups. I've uh, been doing a lot of very different things. I've done uh, business in both uh, tech. My background's technology so consulting big pro enterprise level projects but i've also had you know i had an exotic car rental business i've had uh indoor golf centers and my last one that i saw was an e-commerce golf company where i manufactured golf simulators and i've got an app uh that's uh that was released commercially uh earlier this year and so that's that's growing a lot that's a startup that's seven years in the making so wow. uh, it's a startup but it, you know it feels like a startup but it's been around for so long it's kind of weird yeah. calling it a startup you know Mm -hmm. um, so yeah and and I you can probably tell by my accent although I live in Texas I'm I'm not a native Texan I'm still working on my Texas twang <laughs> um, I, uh, I I was born in former Soviet Union uh, migrated to Australia when I was 10 uh, and moved to Dallas a couple of years ago um, to expand my company um, to to the US and then I opened an office in Europe as well and that's uh, so I sold it uh, a year ago wow that's really about me <laughs> just a little bit there so you know when it comes to creating the business for yourself you know many people struggle many people struggle with trying to create a business from scratch and it's very hard especially after covid a lot mm -hmm. of businesses had plummeted people were trying to figure out you know um, businesses went down what am I going to do? You know, how do I move forward in life? And, you know, it was, it was very hard for a lot of people, even now, you know, people, you know, either they're getting tired of the business they're in, or they just, you know, they're not doing well and they feel it's time to move on. And, you know, it's very hard for people to create a business, you know, from scratch and, and to figure out what's going to work, what's not going to work, what should they focus on? There's so many things. Now, from your own business experience and your own perspective, you know, how do people really start to build a platform that's going to be a successful platform to help them build the business that they want so they could have the life they want? Sure. It's a good question. And you're right. A lot of people struggle through COVID. Um and there are a lot of people that had completely opposite effect. And I'm actually the lucky one. I'm one of those. You know, my business grew 600% wow. uh, during COVID uh, because people, I mean, back in Australia, Melbourne, where I was living at the time, you know, golf was banned, fishing was banned, you know, it was dangerous for the fish. Yeah. And um, the, uh, you know, so, so indoor golf simulation, you know, boomed, but it wasn't just that. I have a friend that actually in Australia, he started up, he, again, just very lucky, a year before COVID, he started an uh, like a Internet of Things IoT business where uh, he would install sensors in uh, uh, like pipe, you know, gas pipelines, oil, etc. Mining. Um, when COVID hit, people couldn't travel to all these remote sites, so yeah. his business went from like one million revenue to I think forty million revenue in two years. Wow! Um, and uh, that's probably a you know that's an extreme example, but the main thing it shows is that if you have a business or if you're trying to start a business. Uh, and I'll probably say it more so to if he's trying to start a business. A lot of people start a business because of something they like, or you know, a lot of people start a business with an with a like a solution looking for a problem. Yeah, um, I've heard that phrase used, and that's probably really accurate. Um, you really need to find a problem that needs a solution. Mm -hmm. And so, even in the in like right now, the economy is sort of not that great. You know, there's a lot of you know a lot of trouble in the world. There's a lot of trouble uh, in 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 the economy. There's a lot of you know tightening of the belts. Um, so yes, that's a problem for a lot of businesses, but it's also an opportunity. If you can find a solution to, Hey, you know, people still want to have, you know, X, but they can't afford it. So right. there's a great opportunity. Well, how, how can you deliver X at a cheaper cost? And if yeah. you find that solution, um, that's how you can build a, a business. And, um, 
you know, there's a um, there's a great book called um, The Trick to Money is Having Some. Um, and uh, I, I think I, I can't remember off the top of my head now the, the author's name, but I remember the book. I love the book. Yeah. Uh, but he says, you know, to, to build a successful business or career, um, all you have to do is really find a problem worth solving, find people that will pay for that problem to be solved. Right. And the bigger the problem, the more the people, the more you get paid. It's it's like a simple mathematical formula. Yeah. Um, so does that make sense? That does make sense. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't look at it like that. A lot of people are looking for the problem and then the solution, you know, and they're trying to figure out what's the, you know, what what's the biggest problem that people are going through. And it, it's, it's hard sometimes to pinpoint and it's hard, you know, and I think you have to also look at the audiences and isn't it, isn't it important to look at the audience and then also look at where the money is, you know, they say, you know, some people say, well, if people really want something, they'll find the money. And then some people are like, well, focus on the audience that actually has the money. You know, what's your, when you have a business, you know, what's your perspective on that? Yeah, I, I don't think people will find the money. I think that's uh, maybe that existed in certain places, and it certainly exists with certain products, like really high luxury, uh, or uh, you know, celebrity. Some celebrity products. There are some that have failed. There's plenty actually. I was reading a report recently about all these celebrities that started up, you know, brands with their yeah. name attached to it, and they failed. Uh, you know, they were sold at auction for you know pennies in the dollar um, because they didn't really solve a you know, a problem uh, and, and people were not willing to pay, you know, eight times more for a hair conditioner because it was, in, you know, endorsed or it had the name of some celebrity. Um, and so, so I think you're right. You, you do want to find the right audience. And the other thing is you want to ask your audience the right question, which is not, do you like my idea, which is so many people do that. And I used to do that as well. You, yeah. know, you want to ask the question of how much are you going to pay for this? Like how much is this worth to you? Right. And if they say, well, you know what? I, I, you know, it's worth $10 to me, right? Let's say you have a widget, right? It's worth $10. Right, right. Well, if you know that it costs you, you know, $12 or even like $8 to make the widget, yeah. you don't have a business. It's right. just viable. And so you have to stop yourself and, and go find a different problem to solve. Or you find a way to make it for $2 so that mm -hmm. you have enough margin to sell it for 10 And right. so that that's a great qualifying question of how much is this problem worth to you? Right. Do you feel like sometimes it's better to find a business that's really thriving and then get into that business, even though, you know, both find something that doesn't have high competition, might, might have medium or low competition and get yourself in, into that area? I, I think if you truly look at a business or an idea from the point of view, what problem am I solving? I think you'd struggle to get into businesses that are very competitive mm -hmm. um, because simply like, like, is it really a problem? You know, it, or are there already a hundred companies that have already solved the problem and you're just going to be one of the noisy ones, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's, that's a viable option. There are plenty of businesses. I have a friend in Australia who buys and he call, he says he finds the most unsexy businesses he can think of. Uh, and he goes, he's, he's acquired two or three businesses like that. And they're extremely profitable, uh, but they're just something you wouldn't even think about. Um, like I think one of them, uh, there's actually an Australian movie called Kenny. If you ever get a chance to watch it, it's it's mm -hmm. it's it's great. It's similar. Very, I think it's maybe even made by the same people that made my my uh, big fat Greek wedding. Oh, okay. But it's uh, it's it's about this guy that rents toilets at events, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think my my friend has a business like that, and um, you know, it doesn't sound very sexy at all, but it's an extremely profitable business. He has a great life. Yeah. And makes a you know um makes crazy money from it. So it because it solves a problem because not many people want, want to go and solve the problem of having toilets, you know, at, um, uh, you know, at, at, you know, those portable toilets, you know, at, yeah, yeah. At, at, at events and stuff. So, so it's examples like that, that kind of, you scratch your head and go, it's, it's not really, you know, it's not, it's not like having a dot com startup and, you know, building the next Google uh, or open AI, but it's, it, it allows you to have an amazing life. So you got to kind of right. ask yourself, what are you really, you know, what are you really uh, looking for? Yeah. Definitely. I've seen so many people like go into the vitamin business. And I'm like, you know what? It's so hard. And I would like, I would, I would like, you know, kind of, you know, I can't tell the person what to do, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise it because it's like, you know, it's a very hard business to get into. And there's so much competition and there's so many things, you know, when it comes to studies and research and this and that, you know, and it's like, what, you know, why take the chance of being a pea in the pod when you can try to find something that you could actually be the diamond and shine, you know? Absolutely. And again, it just comes down to, you know, is there really a problem in the market where, you know, we're missing, choice when it comes to vitamins um 
you know, and, you know, do you have the money to compete with some like, you know, uh, AG1 or some of these bigger brands that have, yeah. you know, Joe Rogan is an investor and obviously, and others and, and have, you know, huge um, marketing budgets, you know, how are you going to compete against that? Exactly, exactly. So, you know, when it came to your own success, what were some of the things that you did to help you grow and get to the point where you are today? Good question. So probably with the late, I'll start with the latest business. We can work backwards, if, you know, okay, kind of get, get there. But, but, you know, the current business was, uh, you know, when I got into golf simulation, I actually got into by accident. Right? Like there's been like a lot of like accidental things that happened. Yeah. And, but, you know, there's, there's a whole philosophy behind that. We are presented with opportunities daily. Right. Um, the question is, are your eyes open to the opportunities? Are your eyes, you know, are you, are you seeing them? Are you, are you truly ready to, you know, jump on them when, when, when they're there? So the, initially I, I used to own indoor golf centers and, and I got into that because I was working in tech and my uh, very good friend was a pretty good golfer and he was getting lessons. He kind of said, why don't you come get lessons with me? Cause you know, I sucked. I played like once a year. Yeah, and I did, and we ended up buying buying that business, um, and then moving it into downtown and built this indoor center in the in the building where I was actually working at the time. Right, um, and so you know that was like a sliding doors kind of moment, um, and then I opened another business of this sort, uh, which was called Twenty Four Seven Golf, which is like those um, twenty four hour gyms. Mm -hmm. You know, you could go in unmanned; there was no staff, so you could yeah. go in and practice golf twenty four hours a day. And my first center, we did really well. My second one didn't do so well. And I, one of the things I struggled with is, you know, I would charge like uh, $13, $15 a week membership, right? Mm -hmm. And you'd come in, band limited. you come practice as much as you want. Um, but people really didn't want to learn how to use the damn device. No. So, so I'd get so many support calls. And then um, my second venue went out of business and, uh, you know, I lost $100,000 on that and I was pretty devastated. Yeah. Was, that doesn't come close to how much I've lost in my business career. We can come back to that. Um, but the problem was uh, the problem I had to get sell all this equipment that I bought, right? So I sold it on um, on Facebook Marketplace, I remember. And I, a couple of weeks went by and, and I noticed that no one was calling me with support issues because they spent like three or $4,000 to, to buy this. Yeah. And, and I went, wait a second, th this is way easier. Uh, so I kind of, I started, I got a few more, I sold those and, and off it went. And I started, I'm like, this is so much easier than having an indoor, like a services venue. Yeah, so yeah. I closed down the other one and I just pivoted completely to e-commerce. Um, and, and then I learned that again, it was a golf summit used to cost 20, $30,000 and the right. price started to come down. And, uh, at the time you couldn't get anything in Australia, like the, the kind of the main equipment you need to, to play. You yeah. have to import it from the US or from somewhere else. It was very expensive. So right. I started manufacturing it, you know, in China and bring it to Australia myself at a much cheaper price. And, you know, that, that's that concept I was talking about. It's like right. there was a problem to solve, which is people wanted this, but they couldn't afford it. Yeah. So I brought it in for a cheaper price. And then I found that I could manufacture cheaper than companies in America. Right. And so then I expanded it to America, which is the biggest golf market. And you know, I solved the problem there as well, even though I was there's competition, but I could come in and I could undercut by 30, 40, 50% any, anyone else in the market. Wow. And so it allowed, allowed me to grow there. And, and uh, so there's a couple of principles from what we talked about that, that kind of helped me succeed, but, but it was kind of, it was lucky because, you know, if I, my, my, that business hadn't gone out of business, uh, I, maybe I wouldn't have pivoted to e-commerce and, right. you know, who knows where I've been now. Exactly. Exactly. And I think people have to realize too, that, you know, people go through a lot of failures before they succeed. You know, Alex Hamozzi, I think he was in the fitness world and I think he had like seven businesses in a row, like that failed on him, you know, until he actually yeah. figured it out and he was able to figure a way to use his talents. And, and, and he, he ended up, you know, teaching others how to go. He went into their businesses and he taught them, you know, how to, how to figure out, you know, how to have a successful business and, you know, and uh, he, he is where he is today. But a lot of people, you know, you have to, you, you learn from your failures. You shouldn't give up, you know, and I think uh, a lot of people yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the, you're right. And, and it also depends what environment you're in. And, and a good example was Australia is very different to, to America in, in, in how people approach entrepreneurs and approach failure. In a, you know, I, I've lost millions. I've had biggest blobs. I've never been bankrupt. I, I tell people I've always paid my debts like the Lannisters, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, <laughs> Um, but it, I've been through some extremely hard times and, you know, uh, a lot of, a lot of my 
sort of rescues have have been from my parents so you know right I, I thank them you know you know as much as I can for for for, for being there for me um but uh in Australia when you when you fail and you fail big you, you have a lot of people generally kind of say haha you know we told you it's a dumb idea you know that happens a little bit and uh, yeah. there's a thing called the tall poppy syndrome there um but here in in, in the states um people celebrate it and I think that's really special. And I think it's quite unique to America. I think it's, it's not unique to Australia that, you know, people kind of have that. Added. I think it's a lot of the world is like this. I yeah. just think America is so different where, where people just celebrate. And in fact, um, when you tell people that you failed, you know, lost millions of dollars and you're back and you've sold a company or whatever, like the, the amount of respect they give you is, is truly remarkable. Right. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's what makes this country so great for entrepreneurs. So I, I think if you're if you are you know if your listeners are in, in, in the states, uh, I think it's a really amazing um, uh, environment to be in, and 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 everyone should embrace it and, and celebrate. Right, I agree with you. I think I think it's really good that people can be supportive when you know people. You know, the concept is you know if you tried, you didn't fail. You know, and move on. You know, and that that's a nice concept because many people, you know, depending on where you are, you know, look at failure as you know they really you could damper someone's self esteem and really you know kill someone's ego just by you know the way you you talk to them after something so traumatic has happened. You know, and that's that you know at that point you're so vulnerable, you know? So when people, you know, attack you in a negative way, you know, that could destroy you. That could destroy you and, and cause you not to even want to try again. So, you know. Very true. And and, and uh, that actually kind of segues into a really important point that I'd, I'd, I'd love to share, which is that the failures make your thin skicker. Every time um, you, you fail, your, your skin gets a bit of a little bit thicker. And thicker mm-hmm. and thicker, and by the time you get them, get to you know my old age, um, and uh, you know, I don't know, ten failures, fifteen. I don't, I don't know, I, don't, I can't remember how many. Plenty. Right. Um, you, you kind of don't care anymore. You're like, eh, it's just normal. And, you know, and I wouldn't be here if I, I didn't have these experiences that taught me so many things. And yeah. I have people reach out to me, and uh, you know, um, there's actually this great company that just uh, this week asked me to be you know an advisor for them. Um, because I have experienced so many failures and I've learned all these ways of how not to do things. Right. And, and, and if you are ever in business, you know, I had a mentor that once said to me, cause I was using Atlassian, which is a great Australian startup worth billions and billions. Um, I kind of was, you know, comparing myself to them. And, and he said to me, I said, never compare yourself to those. They right. are complete out, outliers. There's nothing you can learn from outliers like this. What you need to learn is from people who have actually iteratively failed their way to the top. Yeah. because they actually know what not to do um exactly. and, and and i think that's really important like that, that's what you, you gotta you almost have to embrace finding new ways of finding out how not to do things which is you know the thomas edison example with the light bulb yeah uh, that found ten thousand ways not to make a light bulb and that's how you get there exactly and and that's a great point you know and people have to realize that you know when you, you learn each time you you fail and then you don't you don't make it you know, you, your your skin does grow thicker and you learn from it. And that's the point is, is to, tr- to learn from it. It's when people keep making the rep- repetitive mistakes over and over and over again. But if you're smart, you're going to actually look at what you did and look at what, you know, mistakes you made. That way you can avoid it next time. And it might even, you know, throw some light bulbs out itself and make you realize, <laughs> you know, hey, you know, what if I did it this way, you know, this could have happened and then da da you know, and then you could approach either that business or something else, you know, but using different strategies, you know, that are more successful. Exactly. And, and you also need to learn from other people's mistakes. And I think that's one thing I, I, you know, I did quite well, sort of looking back at the last 25 years of my career, I devoured books of business, you know, business biographies. Uh, You know, I remember reading the guy that started Oh, this probably don't, no one even remembers this, but uh, front page, which was the very first, you know, uh, web editing tool that Microsoft acquired. I remember boohoo.com, which was, you yeah. know, raised 450 million in uh, venture capital and failed, you know, in a, in a massive way. My favorite book, although I'll tell you, uh, in terms of business biography, is uh, Shoe Dog from the guy that uh, that invent, um, started Nike. Oh, I really? Doc- uh, I think there's a Netflix movie about him as well. Um, 
but that book it was amazing because he really uh he really got into uh, detail of you know just hitting rock bottom I, I think most people don't realize there's too many books out there too many stories that talk about you know how it was just a smooth ride up but it's never like that yeah um, and not not enough people i feel go into the you know, they're rock bottom stories. Um, and, but, you know, there's so many podcasts, there's so many documentaries now that there's so many lessons you can learn just by, you know, getting yourself surrounded by the right, you know, the right people, yeah. uh, you know, digitally, you know, they're not real people, but they're, they're real, they're real stories. And, and yeah. I think that's, that's, that's pivotal. And I think it's, it's really important to be around high achievers also. I think sometimes we, you know, people tend to surround themselves with people that aren't go-getters, you know, and if you're around people who are not go-getters, a lot of times their energy will rub off you. But if you're yeah. around go-getters and you're around that type of atmosphere, I think it helps pump you up as a person too, you know, and also you could learn from each other too. So if you have people that are in the business field and they're entrepreneurs and they're actually, you know, achieving, you know, you know, and elevating to the next levels, you know, you could learn from them. I was always open-minded and you never, I never thought that I knew everything because I didn't, you know? So when people, you know, around me were doing much better, I always looked to see, okay, what are they doing that I'm not doing? You know? And I always asked myself that question. Did you do anything similar to that? I did. I, I'm, I joke to my, uh, you know, I have a team, multi, I have multiple teams, but, um, you know, I, I've hired dozens and dozens, hundreds of people at times. And, um, I, I, I always have the same sort of like pep talk, mm -hmm. um, with, with my senior leaders. Uh, and I tell them, say, listen, I'm really lazy. Okay. So, um, I prefer to play golf than work. And so, <laughs> um, so, so what I do is like, I'm going to hire you because I think you're really smart and you're really capable, way smarter than me, way more capable than me. I said, your job is to, to help me play as much golf as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, and, which is, it's funny. And, you know, we all have a good laugh, but it's actually true because I hire great people and I get the hell out of their way. Uh, because they go and achieve great things. And and I, I would, you know, this is critical for any entrepreneur. If you're going to hire people, hire people that hire the smartest people you can afford. Yes. You know, um, because uh, they are going to, they are the ones who are going to scale your business and grow your business, not you personally. You know, you, you know, I'm a good visionary. You know, I set the vision. I know where to go. I kind of, I call it, I see where the puck is going to be, you know, which is the Wayne Gretzky reference. Yeah. You know, I kind of I see customer problems before even customers know. Kind of that's what I feel is my superpower. Yeah. Um, but but I but getting there, that's actually this amazing team that I have working with me. Right. Um. And and that's and you know you talk about surrounding yourself. So whether it's socially uh, or uh, you know in, in your work, you're hiring people. But also if you, even if you like, let's say you, you're you're a, you're an employee, you're looking for a new opportunity. Right. Don't just don't just get interviewed. Interview the people you're about to go work with right make sure that they are high performing make sure they will allow you to be your best and get out of yeah. your way and be there to help you break through walls when you get there you know as a manager I, always, I often tell tell my teams i my job is to break down walls for you so when you hit a wall you come tell me but like don't get me involved in in silly meetings just to you know waste everyone's time it's like just yeah. you know you, you know what you're doing you have you know that's why i hired you Right. Exactly. Exactly. And you do need a team. You know, there are people I know that try to do everything themselves, you know, and, you know, it, it's it's just not possible. You can't grow. You'll stay stagnant. You will either won't succeed or you'll just be plateaued and you'll stay stagnant. And, you know, um, there's so many people, well, I can't afford somebody. Well, you know, you can't, you can figure a way because, you know, if you spend money, you'll make money, you know, and I think that's a, a, a motto that, you know, you know, when people are, you know, they're like oh, afraid to spend the money, but I think when you do have a team, it makes a difference. How do you feel? Yeah, I do totally. And, and, you know, I've often, uh, you know, I tried both ways and, um, I tried sort of starting off from scratch and then, you know, um, doing the work myself and kind of hiring someone. And I've also done sort of just stretching myself and, and I was able to stretch myself. And this is, this is actually quite common in the, in the world now is, um, you know, you have, let's say you have a full-time job and you, ha you, you start a side gig, you know, mm -hmm. so, so you think to yourself, okay, I'm earning say 50 bucks an hour here. Can I hire someone for $35 an hour to do this job? You know, there's so many sites Upwork and all these guys, the freelancer.com and all that. Like, yeah. can I get someone to, to do the work here? Um, so I can keep earning this money and, and you kind of, you arbitrage, like, you, you know, you're making more than you could pay someone. So why don't you just keep working here while someone helps you build, 
Because if you get that and then that person becomes more break even, let's say, then you can afford to hire a second person. Right. That will, again, just help you grow. So you got to ask yourself, you know, how can I make this happen? What, what's the pathway? Like, if you straight away go to, I can't afford it. It's, that, that, it's just, you're just not going to get it anywhere. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, you got to be smart with money and, you know, I'm, it's not my superpower, but, um, but then you're going to get, you know, my wife is much better at it than me. So she helps me out, keeps me honest. And, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's really about how do you find a way somehow, you know, and there's just so many ways. There's, yeah. There's always a way. There's always a way. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think it's really important that you have people around you to help you. I think that's the best way and the only way to grow. I feel like, and and, and to have people that are behind you that can help you and guide you. To, you know, sometimes we think it, we're in the box and it's, it's hard to really see what we're doing and what we're not doing right. But then if you have somebody that's working with you, even a business coach or somebody guiding you along the way that says, you know, that can see, you know, where the mistakes are being made and maybe put you on the right track, that could be beneficial, I think, too. What do you think? Yeah, totally. Just make sure that, you know, the business coach has actually, you know, done it. Yeah. Um, I've, I've, I've had, you know, I've had business coaches before that have been out of disasters. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've also had some that have been, you know, mentors and coaches that have been amazing. I still have some, you know, I, I have them now. Yeah. Um, it's just, I got really much better at selecting the right ones. Um, exactly. And it's, it, you know, and it's often that conversation like this where, you know, you, you, you try to really learn about what have they actually done. Um, yeah. Because the, you know, the, there's too many, uh, there's too many people out there, unfortunately, uh, that you know w when you can't do you teach yeah uh, and and, uh, and and sometimes they're really good at kind of selling you the ideas that they have yeah but if you've never executed those ideas then they're they're, they're exactly. just ideas. exactly you, know, you can find them in a the book <laughs> <laughs> that's very true that's so mm. true you know actually i i, I remember there's only one um I remember uh, through my, I went to three years, I have a bachelor's degree, mm -hmm. right? For, uh, information systems, Melbourne University, very prestigious, you know, uh, university, yada, yada. Uh, and I don't remember anything from my three years, there, like nothing. Yeah. Uh, except the very first lecture of uh, one subject in my first year called project management. And I remember the very first phrase that the lecturer said to me to this day, uh, it was 20, over 20 years ago. Uh, and he said, uh, project management is like sex. There's only so much you can learn from a book. <laughs> um, and I think that applies to like entrepreneurship. It applies to, you know, business and stuff, you know, hiring team. Like you just, th th there's only so much you can learn from a book. You really have to just get out there and do it. Yeah. Uh, and and f fail fast. You know, I'm sure you've heard that concept before. Yeah. Fail fast, move on, you know, just right. experiment, experiment away. You will learn so much from failing. You l generally learn more from failing than from succeeding. Yeah, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And it's funny because like, I think they say we remember maybe not even 15% of what we learn in college. You know, it's all about yeah. experiencing in the big world and, and actually, you know, putting your, you know, diving right into the, into the mud and, and just like, you know, you know, figuring out you know, which way to go and how to climb out and, you know, and just learn it, you know, and that's, that's where you get it through the experience, you know, um, you know, cause you know, you, you're, you you learn, you learn the basics in school, you learn, but it's not, it's nothing near real life. You know, it's like when you come out of school and you go into the real world, it's like, it's, it's a million times different, you know, you know, and, uh, and you really got to catch on real quick, you know, in order to, to succeed, you know? Um, yeah. I would encourage anyone, to, you know, if they're in college, if you have any listening to college, start a side hustle learn you know the school of hard knocks is the best school out there so yeah you know go and try things and you know and if you fail great learn from it by the time you finish you know when i finished college i worked full that's why i don't remember anything because i hardly turned out because mm -hmm. i had a i had a business and then i had a job at a dot com wow. all through you know i had full time at college and i had a full time job and that's um, hard and then but when i finished college i went and applied for like big corporate jobs you know as you're supposed to mm -hmm. I, I wish i did well many ways i wish i didn't but that's a longer conversation um, <laughs> but but I, the salary I got my first year out of college was $70,000 a year. Mm -hmm. I was 20. I was 20 years old. Right. And wow. this is, this is 23 years ago. Yeah. Um, and, and my, my, all my peers that went through like a standard path, the, the highest they had was like 37. Right. So I doubled, I doubled what they were because of the three years that I put in hustling through college, you know, and um, you know, so even if you continue with a corporate job, like you, you can just you can go so much further 
uh, by great. by learning these lessons by experience. Because when you're in an interview, um, you know, and, and I know we were talking about entrepreneurship a lot, but 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 it applies equally to you know if you're in a job interview, uh, you can tell stories about what you've done, and yeah. those stories is what's going to impress the person on the on the other side. They're going to go, you know what, you've done so many different things that I believe you can figure out if you come if you get this job and there's something you, you don't know how to do that I believe that you can work it out. Yeah. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, if you had to take what everything we've talked about and, and and break it into a synopsis, what are some of the takeaways? What are some things you, important things you'd like to emphasize for our listeners to help them? I think the quality of the questions you ask is going to determine the quality of the outcomes you have. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds cliche um, and maybe a little bit overused, but it's truly, uh, it's truly that important to 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 ask the right questions so yeah. you know always ask you know um how can i solve this problem not this is impossible or you know how can i make this affordable how can i you know what is this worth to you you know so so if you're not kind of getting the results if you, if you you know in your life and you're not yeah. getting the results you want whether it's business job personal life relationships anything yeah um I think you have to ask the question is what you know how can i ask better questions where where do i go and find better questions even that question itself Right. It's so much better, you know, than just, you know, being, you know, stuck in your, in, in a rut. It's like, go and find the, the right questions to ask. Go better questions to ask. So right. that would be that one thing. And the second is, you know, um, uh, thicken up your skin, you know, life, life's tough. Uh, life is very tough right now, but it's still better than it was 50 years ago for, you know, 99% of this uh, of the people on this planet. Yeah. Um. So, so, you know, there's, there's, you know, and there's so many, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts. There's so many uh, people talking about the, this, this, this anxious generation now. There's, you know, people are experiencing so much mental health uh, trouble. And so yeah. I, I, I can understand that, but you know, it's up to us individually to, to, to become more resilient. Yeah. Um, so okay. be resilient. Be you know, never give up. If you truly want something, don't give up. Be resilient. Yeah, I agree 100%. Those are great points. Now you came out with two books. So tell us about the books. I want to hear about them. Yeah, that's an interesting long story. But uh, so one of the books I wrote back in uh, 2007, uh, and I kind of never published it. It was on my shelf. And uh, finally, I don't know what, why it was It was to do with manifestation. You know, if you remember the secret when they came out and Mm -hmm. you know, I was, I was a bit like, it made me a little bit mad. I'm like, yeah, you know, I love the principles, but I also thought, you know, if you sit on a couch with a toy steering wheel, you know, that's not going to end up, that's not going to deliver a, you know, your dream car to your driveway. It's just not going to yeah. happen. Um, I hate to break it to all these people that thought it did. Um, <laughs> so I kind of, I sat down, I remember one Christmas and I just wrote out um, this book that um, ended up, uh, and I call it Practical Manifestation, which is basically how would a project, because I was an IT project manager, uh, how would a project manager ta tackle this? Uh, and so that's, you know, so that's going to come out very soon on Amazon and, all of that, but and then um, last year I started writing some thoughts around. I had this, I had this idea, which was, you know, we. I've always been fascinated with this whole concept of manifestation, right? Right. Pe people want, you know, vision boards. I'm a huge fan of Tony Robbins and Richard Bandler and and a lot of the speakers like that. And you know, people put vision boards, mm -hmm. uh, and and they kind of go down this path of you know uh, positive thinking and you know uh, mantras and you know all these things that sort of they, this sort of self self help kind of area talks a lot yeah. about right mm -hmm. um, which is fine but then there's there's this if you look at the greatest companies like I, I love SpaceX right one of my favorite companies in the world Elon yeah. Musk SpaceX and I'm like people said it's impossible to land a rocket back on earth right and and he's done it and I'm and I'm saying well did he you know he had a vision board and a, and, a, and did he say mantras you know did, I'm pretty sure he didn't. There's a yeah. different path to how great the greatest companies on this planet um, achieve really amazing things, and um, and so I took my experience of you know in in delivering projects, in building businesses, and building you know systems and processes yeah. in the corporate world, in the entrepreneurial world, and taking and kind of merging those two concepts together. And so I called it agile manifestation, using kind of agile principles, project management principles, yeah. to achieve anything you want, because that's, I feel like that's kind of what I've done in my right. life you know uh, and uh, and so so yeah th those are the two so the second book will come out later this year the first one will be uh next next few months so that's a whole new experience for me and oh, great. now that i've sort of uh maybe i had a little bit of uh, you know imposter syndrome before as well that you know until i kind of achieved the things i wanted to i wasn't ready to kind of share my story with the world and right now i feel now it feels the right time 
That's awesome. Now you even talked about, you were mentioning to me before the show, you're creating a board game. So tell us a little about that board game. I want to hear about it. Again, this is this is one of those, you know, one of those random things that happened uh, 15 years ago, 2008, I wrote it. Uh, I, I decided, I, I was a huge fan of um, Robert Kiyosaki's, uh, you know, Cashflow 101. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you know that one or if your listeners do. Um, I used to play it in my early 20s and uh, I was a big fan. And I, I felt like, you know, as I kind of was in my entrepreneurial career, yeah, I felt that I, there was all these experience. I could package it up and, and make a board game out of it. So I wrote it 15 years ago and then I put it on the shelf and did nothing with it. <laughs> and then last year, um, uh, you know, having sold the company again, just, just this imposter syndrome that I kind of got over. Um, yeah. And, and also my career has changed. You know, I've done so many things happened to me 50 years, so many more failures happened in the 15 years. And I, and yeah. I thought, you know, I'd love, I'd love to kind of dust it off. And, and I started talking to people about it. Uh, and I'm a member of this uh, organizational entrepreneur organization here in Dallas. And, um, right. and I spoke to them about it and everyone got very excited. And so my idea was to publish this board game. So it's coming out hopefully next month. Uh, um, and it really is, to me, it's like that. You know, it's the school of hard knocks, but in a board game. It's going to teach you what it's like to get punched in the face you know, on, <laughs> on, on a daily basis as an entrepreneur, which is what we have to learn how to, how to, you know, how to take. Yeah. Um, and and um, you know, this is more like a give back, and you know, hoping people give it to you know uh, um, kids, and but it's you know, it's for kids, for adults, for anyone who who's wants an entrepreneur kind of journey, wants to see what it's like. Yeah. Um, and and the feedback I've had so far in the play testing has been really interesting. There's a lot of people who thought entrepreneurship was this. They play it and they're like, when we experience this, is that what you meant? I'm like, exactly right. You know, what you think you have this like you know, rose-colored image of what entrepreneurship is like. You yeah, know, there's all this collaboration and this like this cool stuff you're doing and brainstorming and big whiteboards and but yeah. it's actually like this this grind, yeah. you know. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, no, it's the grind. It's 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 this. This is in the yes. movies, this is reality. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That is amazing. And and I called it wait, you're gonna love the name. I called it Entrepreneurpoly. <laughs> so entrepreneurpoly.com, I think is is the URL. So um I haven't put up a website yet, but uh, you know, it'll yeah, it'll yeah. be there. Oh, it'll that's awesome. There. That's amazing. That's amazing. Now, where can people find you? Uh so look, I'm I'm active on LinkedIn. Um uh I've also have a website, igorweinstein.com. Uh, and, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, um, my handle on, on Twitter or sorry, X, X.com is, uh, the Igor. I've had it since 2008. Mm -hmm. I haven't used it for like 14 years. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of getting back into it. You know, I got my yeah. big check mark. Uh, so I'm kind of getting back into it, uh, as well. So, uh, but LinkedIn is probably one of the best ways I'm, I'm quite active on there. Oh, that's awesome. Oh my God. This has been amazing. I hope, you know, Thank I welcome you. you back on the show. I'd love to have you back on the show. You have a really, a lot of great insights and you really open people up to really what entrepreneurship is really like. And there's so many things that, you know, you can tap into because, you know, a lot of people don't realize how hard it is, but they don't realize, you know, there's a lot of solutions out there. And we, if you focus on the solution and not the problem. And you really focus on, you know, how to really construct things a little bit differently. And you learn from your failures and you don't, you don't dwell on them, but you learn from them and move on. You know, a lot of great things could happen because it makes you stronger, like you said, and it makes you more knowledgeable and, you know, having resilience and having knowledge and having experience, it can make you a superstar, you know, and as long as you use it in the right way, it, you you could go far and you can be successful and they, everybody's dream can be become their reality. It's just really focusing and creating that plan, learning from your mistakes, you know, being strong and having your experience and putting it to action, you know, that call to action, it goes a long way. Well, you know, Igor, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I really enjoyed you. Thank you for having me, Stacey. And uh, anytime, come back anytime. We can, I'm sure we have lots of topics we can, uh, we can unpack further. Oh, definitely. Definitely. All right. You have a great day. You too. Thank you.